Hello everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Novak again. Uh, one of my people that uh, watch my channel, Sony, asked me if I could do test on this aquarium right here that I set up so he could see how it comes out. I just bought brand new from Petco API test strips which test uh, five different elements which is NO3, NO2, pH, KH, and GH. So first I'm going to try that out and dip it in there and let you see what it looks like. Uh, as you can see it's not showing up. At least not on this test kit. Any nitrates. And this is a slow moving plenum. Now I watched a video, I got the link below so everyone can watch it. And the name of it is What CO2 Really Does for Your Aquarium? Side-by-Side -side Aquarium CO2 Experiment. And what he does, he takes two tanks, 16 gallons, he cuts all the plants down to the same size. They're aggressive plants, not slow-growing plants like I have in my tank. And uh, one he injects CO2. The other one, no CO2 at all. That's the only difference. He puts 13 neon tetras in both tanks and he feeds 0.2 grams a day. That's not very much food. And for 40 days he does the test to see uh, how well the plants grow and he tests for nitrates and phosphates. Now in this particular tank, different than his tank, uh, as I have said before, plants really don't utilize nitrogen unless it's peak photosynthesis. And if you watch this man's video, you will find out in the tank that's using CO2, the nitrates are being used. But you have to think of a plant as like a steam engine. It has to catch up steam, then it goes into peak photosynthesis, and then after that when the lights are out it starts slowing down, shutting down. Only do during peak photosynthesis can a plant take nitri nitrates, break it down to nitrites, and then to ammonia. Ammonia what it is what it uses. It doesn't use the nitrates exactly. Not because I have a brand new plant in here. It's a crypt. It's in the very front here. And crypts are one of those plants that have not learned how to use nitrates. And if they start taking nitrates in and it stays in their leaves, you get crypt rot because it doesn't know how to break down the nitrates. A lot of plants do. And when he shows this test, he shows the different growth rates, but in the aquarium that has no CO2, it doesn't use any of the nitrates, and the nitrates keep going up and up and up for the next 40 days. And I just mixed the Lamont mix, and I got to wait a couple minutes. So we're going to see uh, after I mix this, I have to add a, another chemical to it, and then we'll be able to see the nitrates with a Lamont test kit, not the API, but we'll try a Lamont. The Lamont is what experts are going to use. Okay. Uh, I think a test kit like this costs about 60 bucks for a test kit like this. Uh, I'm not absolutely sure, but they're kind of expensive. Anyhow, um, so he shows with these two tanks and the one that uses CO2, of course, it, uh, it does great. No nitrates and no phosphates. Of course, the plants have doubled in size. On the aquarium that did not use CO2, the plants grew, but not very much. And he shows that by feeding only 0.2 grams of food a day with 13 Neon tetras, which really is a very light, light fish load. Now, he starts gaining nitrates within 40 days. 
And he said, then they're forced to do a water change just to bring the nitrates down, okay, because they're going to rebuild up. So this is proof that plants will not use nitrates into peak photosynthesis. This is something I did over 30 years ago. Do t I did tests like this. So don't be deceived when people say plants use nitrates. Only during peak photosynthesis will they use nitrates, and usually that is only if you're going to use CO2 and in aquarium plants. Otherwise, if you have a tank like mine, don't really count on your plants going to use nitrates. They are going to use ammonia. It's an easier food source for the plants, and it's less work. And this is how they get their amino acid and proteins by the ammonia, not nitrates. So, of course, nitrates are going to start building up, especially if, if you have a plant like I do. Nothing in here, Anubias, uh, uh, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to really take out the nitrates. And uh, the Java fern isn't either. These are both slow-growing plants. So your nitrates are going to go sky high. So that's why I wanted to show everybody if you use like a slow moving plenum like this, will it help eliminate nitrates? Because you don't want them to build up or get too high because then you start having problems not only with your fish and, and uh, algae problems and everything else. And as you can see from this tank, tomorrow is Friday, I'll be doing like a two gallon water change, maybe three gallon water change, just so I can get in there and clean the glass with a sponge and everything else. And then after I'm done, I fill it back up again. Uh, that way I don't splash water all over the place because I don't have a rim on this aquarium. But I feed these six, seven times, as I said in my other video, and every feeding I feed these fish, they probably eat at least 0.2 grams of food. So you figure you do that six, seven times a day, and he only is feeding that much in one day. I feed it in every feeding. Plus the fact these parrotfish have more mass than 13 neons. One parrotfish has more mass than all 13 of those neon. So the way his experiment shows and the amount of plants he's using, which are very aggressive plants, compared to what you're going to see here, these are not aggressive plants. So we're going to now see if the nitrates are being consumed by the slow-moving plenum. We know they're not going to be consumed by the plants. That's, that's a gimme because I'm not using CO2. This is just what every hobbyist would do out there. This is how you would set up your aquarium. Uh, the test strip is still showing nothing, zero. And it's showing no nitrites. I don't know if you can see that or not, but yeah, it's showing nothing. Uh, I think the pH 7.5, KH and GH just fine. But the Lamont is going to tell us exactly um, what's going on in this tank. It's not going, it, it goes right down to 0.25 in uh, nitrates. That's pretty low. If you can get your tank down to 0.25. So we got to wait for everything to settle down here so we can see. Uh, the color change, so bear with me on this one. But as he does the experiment, the CO2 makes a big difference if you have aggressive plants and the nitrates will not appear. But what you have is what I call, I've written articles on it called PE, pollution equilibrium. In other words, he's got to keep testing it, keep adding more fish and more fish and more fish till he finds out the pollution level now is higher than what the plants can consume. Now, when I designed all this stuff, I did all these experiments years and years ago. What I found out is if you want to plant an aquarium, it's just going to have a very, very light fish load. You're going to feed lightly. You won't have to worry too much about nitrates if you're using CO2. But if you're not using CO2, after you watch his video, you're going to see nitrates are going to keep rising and rising and rising and rising until you finally start doing water changes. So, let's see what this tank is doing with the fish load that I have compared to, of course, 
what he had. And the, the Lamont should not lie. Well, it's not going to lie. This is, this is in case you're interested in buying a Lamont test kit. Uh, these are what DVMs would use, and this is what they would use in labs and stuff like this, this particular test kit that I'm holding. Anyhow, I want you to watch the video. I have the link below, what it's called, the name of the video, and I don't know if you could see that. I'm trying to see it in the light. It's got a little bit of pinkish color, but remember, this is a very, very sensitive test kit very sensitive so here we go there we go now if you look at the very bottom numbers it looks like the color doesn't match anything on top okay that's pretty clear nothing on top matches because the top two on the left hand side is 0.25 and 0.5 and a nitrate on the bottom though is one 0.0 and 2.0 on the bottom left. On the right side you're going to have 4.0, 6.0 and on the bottom 8.0 and 10.0. So right now from what I'm looking at it's going to be on the Lamont test kit the bottom left 1.0 to 2.0 it looks like we have nitrogen between 1.0 and 2.0 which is going to be if you try to convert this and come up with uh, a nitrogen in other words we have uh, right here we have a uh, nitrate as nitrate nitrogen which is NO3-N to convert to nitrate NO3, we have to multiply what we see here by 4.4. So this looks like it's about a 2, which means we got about an 8 points parts per million of nitrates. And this particular um, slow moving plenum is not really broken in yet. I would say maybe in another. Mm, three to four weeks it'll be a hundred percent broken in but there you go there's your nitrate level I would say 2.0 right we can all, I think we can all pretty much agree to that that this tank with these fish and those few plants has a nitrate reading of 2.0 or nitrates as 8.0 what is that, eight? So that's pretty good for a tank like this with the fish load and these fish being fed six to seven times a day. That would explain, right, why these parrot fish have already spawned twice since I've owned them in two months. And that would explain quite a lot of why I'm not getting a bunch of cyanobacteria or hair algae, why the water is crystal clear even though it's in front of a window. Uh, this would explain a lot, wouldn't it? Because you don't have a lot of food source for the algae to really eat off of because as this plenum is starting to age, it's actually, actually starting to utilize the uh, nitrates that are in here. And the reason I did this is because as much as we like plants, unless you're going to dedicate your whole tank to plants only, okay, you're going to want to have plants like I do, and you're going to want to have some fish. You're not going to want to put a nice tank full of plants and have little bitty tetras or, or and a lot of people do that. Did you notice that? A lot of YouTubers, they have planted tanks and their fish are little bitty tiny fish. And I want to show, just like I did with my last video when I had the discus and the angels and everybody keeps complaining, oh, the tank's overcrowded. That had no nitrates. That was the same as this tank. It had no nitrates in it, and yet everybody complained, oh, you have too many fish, too small. And I said, you're missing the point. 
of why I made this video. It was to show how the anoxic filter and how to make a substrate in your aquarium to keep your nitrates low. And some people say, no, it wasn't the tank doing that. Uh, he's wrong. It's the plants. Well, if you watch this guy's video, you will find out it's not the plants, not unless you're using CO2. Otherwise, your nitrates are just going to go skyrocketing out of control and you're going to pay the consequences if you have a lot of fish. Now, let's say if I had some uh, 13 little neons in here, I wouldn't have to worry about anything. But the parafit had have doubled since I owned them. I also want to show you, I made this little plastic piece. I heard about this, the bubblers. It was actually dripping a little bit from the slow moving plenum off to the side of the aquarium. So I made this plastic piece and now that stops the bubbler from actually sending some water over that ridge by the brass piece at the very corner there. And it was just dripping enough to get on top of the table. That is the crib. I just bought that crib. But what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you this substrate I'm using has to be from the 80s. It's even older than I thought. It, it is really inert now. It's, it's very old. I think it could have had some fluorite gravel in it or something, but it's from the 80s. And of course, gravel doesn't go bad, but it has nothing in it. So this is how I feed a plant. I will go down, put it right by the root system, go all the way down to where you have your plenum and squirt it in there. See, you don't squirt it in the tank, you squirt it right by the root system. And now we're going to be able to watch this plant and see if it grows. And now that fluoride that I put in there, the flourish iron that I put in here, it will slowly, very slowly seep through the entire week throughout the tank to help feed the plants a little bit. So I hope this uh, video will help you watch the other person's video because you're going to see that without CO2, plants will not utilize nitrates. So you need another source to use your nitrates. Quit putting your gravel directly on the bottom of the tank. For a little bit of money and have some fun, make yourself a slow moving plenum. What, what's, what harm is it going to do anyhow? I have a couple videos on it to connect up a canister to do it with a bubbler like I'm using. It works both ways. It will take a while for it to 100% break in. As you can see, this tank really doesn't have a nitrate, nitrite problem, anything like that. I do use a canister filter, but you know a canister filter is going to produce nitrates, right? Because it's using what? High oxygen bacteria, aerobic bacteria, not anoxic conditions. Okay, so until next time, Watch that guy's video and you'll see exactly what I've been talking about. And thank you once again for watching. This is Dr. Novak.